Jackie and Jackie's cooking. And today, everyone, I'm going to show you how to properly clean your fish and dry it. Drying will preserve the fish. It'll give it a longer shelf life for as long as a year or more. It's a great thing. Any kind of fish you want to use, you could dry. So we have some freshly caught sea bass. Okay, we do a lot of our own fishing up here. Okay, a nice big, big kind of guy right here. We have some lime. We have some salt, which is the main star of this. We have some chili powder. We have some lime juice. We have some black pepper. We have some red pepper flakes. And we have some vinegar, okay? So guys, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And don't forget to press that notification bell. And don't forget to have your shears, guys, and also a knife with you for this process. All right, so guys, I had this fish soaking in some vinegar and lime water. And I've had this soaking for about 20 minutes. Um, I did this because it helps remove that slime especially when you go for all you guys who know who've done fishing um, a lot of times when you're pulling fish out of the water it's always slimy and I guess that's their what helps it's like a coating they have on them so that vinegar that acidity helps remove that sliminess off of the fish okay And of course, if you don't um, fish, um, you will understand that um, that coating, I guess is some form of, it's like a stress coat for them. I mean, I'm not a deep fisherman like that, um, but I guess it's like a stress coat. So when they're in the water or what have you, but I just know it's a slimy coating that they have on them when um, you get them out of the water, okay? So I know the vinegar does help take that off, okay? Um, my mom taught me about this process, about drying fish. Um, you can preserve the fish for a year or more. It doesn't have to be refrigerated, but the main star is the salt. Okay, so we're going to remove all these fins that you see because they're not edible that I know of. Okay, and if the eyes look cloudy, it's because the fish was soaking in the vinegar and lime water. So the acidity clouded up the eyes. Okay, so I'm using my shears. If you don't have shears, you could use um, a knife. To remove start removing the fins and be careful guys with the fins they're sharp trust me they are sharp okay and they will poke you so you know just be mindful when you're cutting okay and um, this cleaning process this drying process can apply to all the fish that I know of okay any type of fish that I know of if you want to dry and preserve fish but for cleaning fish most of the fish that I am that I'm familiar with this is how I'm used to cleaning it as well okay I think it was just easier for me to use the shears if you have a nice sharp knife, honey, it'll work just as well. And I'm going slower in this process because I just want it to be detailed. And I wanted you guys out here to catch on, okay? Now, you don't have to cut this part. I only cut this part because I wanted to show you how thorough of cutting and cleaning would be, but you do not have to cut that part. I mostly keep that part on, okay? But you don't have to cut the tail part. Okay?
Okay, so guys, I'm going to take, you can take your knife or your shears, and there's a hole right at the lower part belly of the fish. That's the anal, anal part, if I'm not mistaken. I just know it's the lower part hole. That's where all the defecation comes out and stuff. And I'm going to cut from there, going all the way up to where the head part is, okay? Because that's the part, this is where it gets really messy, okay? But you got to do this. You got to gut it, okay? This is the gutting part. So we're doing a fresh cut from the bottom part where the hole was up to the neck part of the fish. Okay, and I'm using my, and guys, this did not smell pleasant, let me tell you. Okay, lucky I had a bowl of water and you're just gonna pull all of that nastiness out. That's the kidneys, the guts, the intestines, everything it ate, okay? And you're just gonna pull it out. I was lucky enough when I pulled it out, everything came along with it, even the gills. Yes, honey, so just have a bowl of water with you for all you beginners out there with this process. My husband was, my uncle and my husband, they're fishermen. Well, my uncle, rest his soul, he was a, a serious fisherman. And I learned a lot from him, fishing, and my husband's a fisherman. He does a lot of fishing, and he's pretty good at it. Okay. All right, so that's all the guts and stuff. Don't mean to be graphic, but it's life. That's what it's involved with fish, you know? Okay? And you don't want to eat that part. I don't think it's edible. I mean, as I'm aware, it's not edible, but... Different strokes for different folks. Okay? Okay, so I'm just pulling anything out of there that might be stuck onto the bones or anything like that. I think that's another piece of the gill from the other side of the face of the fish that I'm pulling out. Okay, so I'm going to take some salt, guys, and I'm going to pour a lot of salt on the bones. This is still me cleaning. I just want to clean in between the bones of the fish to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I'm going to take a piece of half of my lime, and I'm going to use that along with the salt to, as, to act like it's an abrasive to remove any kind of milk or crook, whatever, from the um, bones, okay? Again, you know, everything, especially if you're from the Caribbean, if your family's from the Caribbean, you know what time it is. That lime and that vinegar, we have to do. It's It's... It's something that we just have to do, especially in my household, you know, growing up as a kid. At least if you know you're eating for me, you're eating good, clean food. Okay, you see how we're cleaning in between the bones and stuff? And of course, guys, you're going to do this quicker with time. Okay, I'm just slowing it down for you guys because I want to make sure you you get all the well details of this. Okay. Let's 
See how that looks clean on the inside? Okay, so now we're going to start scraping it, guys, and you're going to go against the scales. Since the scales were going away from me, I have to scrape coming towards me. That's how it, it works for me um, to remove the scales. And for some reason, because I let it soak in that vinegar and lime water, it appears to me that the scales were coming off more on an easier basis. So... Um, that works for me okay so just with the knife you can just start scraping and and um, scaling your fish this is the scaling process removing that hard that hard scaling from the fish Okay, make sure you move all the scales. Okay, so our fish is nice and clean. Um, what we're going to do now, I'm going to score the fish. I mean, I'm going to make some slits in between on the fish, 45 degree angles. Okay, um, we're not going to go all the way through to the bone. We're going to just go down to the bone, but not past the bone. Okay, I'm just going to do like three scores. Okay, and this is going to allow me to put my spices and salt in between the meat as well. Okay, and I'm going to do these scores on each side of the fish. Okay, and remember guys, you got to heavily salt this fish. Okay, because then we're going to put it into a brine as well. Okay. If you just have pure lime or lemon juice, it's fine. The only reason why you'll see me add vinegar later on to the brine, which nothing's wrong with that, is because I wanted to um, submerge the fish in the brine, okay? So you could take regular white salt, just plain old regular white salt, okay, um, and do it. You could use seasoned salt, but it has to be heavily salted. Whatever other spices you want to add, Knock yourself out, but make sure you add that salt because that's what's going to dry out the fish. Okay, pour it on top of it, go on the inside. I'm adding some black pepper because I'm doing some of the salted fish for my mother as well. Because she knows, you know, my husband goes fishing a lot up here, so. She just wanted salt, a little heat. That's it. Whatever else you want to add to it, go ahead. If you want to add garlic, lemongrass, ginger, whatever, but just make sure you add heavy amounts of salt, okay? And you are going to add your red pepper flakes. I'll list the ingredients in the description box below, okay? Add plenty of that in between the slits. And guys, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And don't forget to press that notification bell so you can get weekly updates on all of my delicious recipes. And don't forget to like and share. Let everybody know Jackie's cooking. Okay, so I'm adding my chili powder. It has heat in it. Okay. If you have some fresh roasted chilies, you could put in the blender hot scotch banner peppers. I usually do that too and smear it on there. 
you know, um, whatever. But again, the main thing is that salt. That's the main star here. That's what's going to dry out the fish. Okay. This is one of the processes here. Because I'm going to put mine in that nice um, citrus vinegar solution. Some people, they just take it just like this. And just leave the salt on. And um, the salt will eventually take out all that excess water, but we like to put it in a nice le lemony, limey, vinegary kind of brine as well, because that adds a beautiful flavor. Okay, and of course your fish will be preserved for a, a year or more. It doesn't have to be refrigerated. So if you have a lot of fish and you want to preserve it, this is one sure way of preserving your fish, okay? See that? All those beautiful spices. Okay, so now I'm going to take this fish, I'm going to put it in a bowl, and I'm going to submerge it in my lime juice. The only reason why I added vinegar as well is because I didn't have enough lime juice and I wanted to submerge it, but you know, there's nothing wrong with the vinegar. Okay, I just wanted to submerge that. That water is nice and salty with the fish. All those spices. And you're going to let that submerge in there for 24 to 48 hours. Okay? And it really depends on how big of a fish you have, too. I mean, if you have a bigger fish than this, I think, you know, 24 hours will do. But if you want it more intense, 48 hours would be fine as well. Okay? So now, guys, um, 24 hours has arrived. I'm taking some twine because I am just going to hang this fish in my back patio. Um, so I can hit the sun. This is when you're going to do sun drying. Now, um, because I, I live in an area where, you know, you have a lot of critters and, and stuff, I don't want to leave it out because it won't be in my best interest because I don't want them nibbling on this. So I am putting this in my back patio so the air is going to dry it and whatever sun that comes through will dry it as well. Okay, and this will usually take about five to seven days depending on how the weather is okay but my back patio deck is screened in so as you can see I'm hanging it here okay and I'm gonna leave it for five to seven days or until it gets nice dry and hard okay you see that and it will not smell up your patio okay and this is some fish that I had dried prior Okay, this is some bass. As you can see, it gets hard and stiff. You can leave it out. It doesn't have a strong scent to it like that, okay? Because you're preserving it with that brine and that vinegar or the lime juice. Some You have some perch and stuff. And I had some catfish that I dried. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to leave your comments for me in the comment section below, okay? Bye.